Around 10 years ago, a priest traveled to an island in Malaysia with his daughter and wife on a mission to bring the word of God to the natives. At first they were very welcome and the island's inhabitants would go to the newly built church every day. However soon the followers of the local gods became angry that a white man was trying to overwrite their beliefs and shortly after weird symbols and masks began appearing around, the church was burned down. In the present, American teenager Toby ignores his father David's request to work on the car together to remember the old times because Toby would rather fool around on his phone. David decides to work alone anyway, and soon after he steps outside, he's surrounded by a group of masked criminals that attack him with a knife before escaping with the car. Because the television is on, Toby doesn't hear anything until the car takes off, and by the time he goes outside, it's too late. David's murder appears all over the news and Toby can't shake off all the guilt he feels. His mother takes him to see a psychologist who recommends a special program that takes traumatized people to an uninhabited island to give them time to think and go through serious introspection, and Toby accepts. A few weeks later, Toby's on a boat to the island, throwing up because of seasickness. This makes him the perfect target for a prank in which he's hit by the sail and thrown into the water. After a whole day of sailing, Leader K explains each group member will be dropped on a different island, and they'll have to stay there for three days and three nights. They're given a sleeping bag, a tarp, a torch light, some food, and a flare they must use in case of emergencies. The next morning, K drops Toby off and reminds him to be on the shore at the crack of dawn in three days. Seeing her leave reminds Toby of the night the police took his father's body, but then he forces himself to get started. He begins by making a very bad tent with the tarp while talking to himself to feel less lonely, then he enters the jungle to pick up some wood. There are some coconuts on the ground that he tries to grab as well, but when he moves the vegetation away, he's shocked to find a dead monkey that reminds him of how he found David's body. He decides to return to his tent without the coconuts, only to discover another monkey has eaten half of his food. Then he tries to start a fire, but he fails and only manages to hurt his hand. Afterward, Toby walks into the water to see if he can catch some fish. He ends up accidentally stepping on some shells and hurting his foot, but at least he also finds some clams. His foot bleeds in the water and this blood reaches one of those mysterious masks at the bottom of the sea. Later, Toby uses his Swiss knife to open the clams and discovers it comes with a magnifying glass which allows him to finally start a fire. When night falls, Toby has the clams for dinner, but they make him feel sick. After throwing up, Toby walks into the jungle with the torch light to look for those coconuts in order to have a drink, but when he finally finds them, he hears someone running behind him among the trees. By shaking his torchlight around, Toby finally gets to see that the source of that noise is a creepy face behind a tree that suddenly runs off. Terrified, Toby runs back to his camp and lights the flare before he passes out as memories of his father's death flood his mind. During the night, the high tide takes most of Toby's things away. The next morning, Toby mysteriously wakes up resting against a tree, and there are already cut coconuts waiting for him. After having a good drink, Toby's shocked to notice there's a girl in the water, and when she tries to leave, he follows her. The girl suddenly turns around with a knife in hand but it turns out she doesn't want to attack Toby, she's just following the sound of an animal trapped in one of her many traps. Madeline explains they can't stay there because it's dangerous, so Toby follows her after noticing exactly how deadly those traps are. He has lots of questions for Madeline, but she doesn't talk except to share her name. They make it to a dam that was built by missionaries, and Madeline starts a fire to cook her catch and share it with Toby. When they're done, Madeline announces she's going home and that Toby can't follow her. Toby tries to anyway, and Madeline suddenly takes her knife out again but it's to kill a snake that almost kills Toby. Before leaving for good, she advises him to stay close to the fire because it keeps the animals away, and Toby follows her instructions, falling asleep inside a makeshift shelter that was already on the dam. That night, one of his dad's killers finds Toby and attacks him, but it turns out to be just a nightmare. Now awake, Toby notices the fire's out and tries to start a new one, getting nervous as he keeps hearing noises in the darkness. Thinking it may be Madeline, Toby enters the jungle and finds some thread that shakes some weird decorations on a tree when he pulls it. The creepy figure appears behind Toby and tries to come closer, but as soon as Toby turns around, the creature is gone. The next morning, Toby wakes up in the shelter to find Madeline already cooking breakfast. She notices the wound on his foot and takes him with her to find a special plant that will help with it. She also shares she's been on this island since she was a child and it's only her and her mother left because her dad died. When they find the plant, Madeline applies it to Toby's wound, explaining you can't eat it unless you want to fall asleep. When she puts a bit of it on Toby's lip to prove her point, Toby realizes his lips now numb. The teens spend the day together, and Madeline teaches Toby all she knows about surviving on the island, from fishing to making a shelter. In return, Toby tells her about things like high fives and the internet. When night falls, Madeline has to leave again, and Toby notices she's going in the direction of the tree with the weird decorations. Madeline leaves him a spear she made so he can protect himself and explains that if he comes with her, her mother will kill him. She promises they can see each other again in the morning, but Toby explains they'll pick him up at dawn and this hurts Madeline, who feels she's being abandoned. Madeline runs to her home in the tree and Toby stays behind to try to talk to her, so when Kay arrives at the beach at dawn, 
She doesn't see the boy anywhere. Kay could hear Toby yelling Madeline's name and enters the jungle with her torchlight out to find him. But when she begins hearing weird noises among the trees, she trips and falls, losing the torchlight in the process. Suddenly, Kay finds herself blinded by her own torchlight, but when she comes closer to see if it's Toby, the light goes out and the torchlight is thrown on the ground. When Kay reaches out to grab it, she notices two glowing eyes in the dark and without notice, a paw appears on top of her hand. For a few minutes, the only noise in the dark is Kay screaming. The next morning, Toby wakes up realizing he fell asleep while calling out for Madeline so he must rush to the beach, but he finds it empty. He sits to wait just in case anyway, and after a few hours, he notices a life buoy floating around. When he enters the water, he finds a whole trail of objects, and he follows it to find Kay's boat floating upside down. To his surprise, Madeline's mother is swimming out of it with Kay's supplies. Once the woman is out of sight, Toby swims inside the boat to investigate and finds two flares inside a cabinet, but to his dismay, he finds also Kay's body behind a door. Terrified, Toby begins swimming away before he runs out of air, only to get his clothes stuck on another door. Fortunately he manages to untangle them and return to the surface just in time. Afterward, Toby enters the jungle and finds Kay's torchlight with a weird scratching mark on it. Using this torchlight, he decides to go through the entrance of Madeline's tree and discovers a rocky tunnel filled with bats and weird noises. The creepy creature approaches him from behind again and makes Toby drop the torchlight, leaving him in darkness. The noises begin getting closer, so Toby searches the ground until he finds the torchlight and turns it on again, which allows him to suddenly see some really creepy drawings on the walls. Moments later, Toby finds the end of the tunnel and comes out to find what is left of the old burned church. He also hears a goat bleeding, and when he goes to check, he finds Madeline's mother killing it for food. Then he keeps looking around and finds the cabin where both women live. Inside, he finds Kay's empty bag, a box with three passports, and an old picture that indicates Madeline and her mother are the family that came with the priest all those years ago. There's also a can of gasoline, and most importantly Kay's radio, which Toby immediately uses to call for help. He only gets one hello from the other end before the line goes dead, and at that moment, Toby has to run and hide under the bed because Madeline and her mom are back. While the mother prepares a special concoction with the dumbing plant, she has an argument with Madeline because she thinks her daughter isn't ready to go out there. When Toby moves further under the bed not to be seen, he's shocked to find an extremely creepy mask and realizes this is the face of the creature that attacked him before. As soon as the mother leaves the room, Toby approaches Madeline, but Madeline reminds him this is dangerous and promises to meet him at the beach later. Toby makes his way back to the beach and uses everything he's learned to catch some fish and start a fire. While having lunch, he notices a light blinking on the other end of the island and he replies by starting an extra big fire that can be seen from a distance. In the evening, Toby's trying to sleep when he's suddenly startled by Madeline, who had thought Toby would be gone by now. He explains Kay's dead and that he thinks the mother killed her, causing Madeline to rest her head on Toby's leg and share the few things she remembers from her childhood. She used to be happy living with her family and playing with the local kids, but one day something happened, and she only remembers being in a corner crying while her mother, covered in blood, told her not to look. Madeline admits she sees terrible things at night and that her mother probably killed them all. Toby asks Madeline if she wants to run away with him because they'll probably send a new boat soon, and Madeline accepts, but she'll come back tomorrow to avoid her mother getting suspicious. The next morning, Toby wakes up when he hears a plane flying by, but by the time he runs after it, it's already gone. However this run has allowed him to find an abandoned lighthouse that he proceeds to investigate. Unfortunately the light isn't working, and when Toby checks out its inner workings, he remembers all the things David taught him about taking care of cars, this allows him to understand the light needs gasoline. Then Toby begins making his way back to the beach when he suddenly bumps into someone. It's Cameron, another one of the guys that signed up for the service. He was never picked up either, but he did find a rowboat, so he used it to try to find other people because his own island's definitely empty. Toby shares some food and tells him about his experience while making a new spear, which he uses to threaten Cameron when he points out that trusting a crazy pair of murderers is dumb. After apologizing, Toby explains he refuses to leave Madeline behind because she's also a victim and goes looking for her. Moments later, he makes it to the house, only to be caught by surprise by the mother. The woman takes the spear from Toby and lets him go to try to make him see reason, but Toby runs away. Mother runs after him and accidentally falls into one of Madeline's traps, leaving her stuck between a tree and a thicker spear. Knowing she doesn't have much time left, the mother explains to Toby that she didn't kill anyone. She's only been trying to scare people away because the crazy murderer is actually Madeline. All those years ago, the locals tried to warn them that something evil was on the island, but the priest didn't believe them and tried to depend on the word of God. While he and his wife argued with the natives, Madeline took the chance to wander and approach the altar where the locals killed animals as an offering. This allowed the demon to use the child as his vessel in a ritual that matched the drawings Toby saw in the tunnel. It was Madeline that killed everyone in the church and burned it to the ground, only leaving her beloved mother alive. Mother then gives Toby the special plant in a bag to subdue Madeline and points out that she doesn't like the light when she's demonic. Before dying, Mother reminds Toby that Madeline shouldn't leave the island. 
Meanwhile Cameron is waiting at the camp when he suddenly hears some weird noises. He enters the jungle to investigate and comes across a bunch of bones on the ground that distracts him from seeing the real danger. A demonic Madeline appears right next to him and drags him away through the trees to kill him. By the time Toby comes back, only Cameron's blood's left. A noise suddenly makes him turn around and he sees demonic Madeline coming closer with her mother's body. But she becomes human again when she realizes Toby's a friend. She demands to know what happened to her mother, and in order to keep her calm, Toby says he did it so they could be together. This makes Madeline happy and she kisses Toby, pushing him to the ground to get frisky. Toby loses the little bag with the special plant when he falls, thus he pretends to be into it to be able to recover it. When Madeline notices, she growls and begins to change, but Toby manages to find her spear and uses it to knock her out. Then, he puts the plants in her mouth to keep her subdued and uses some vines to tie her up. Afterward, Toby runs to the house to grab the gasoline and prepare a torch that lights his way back to the lighthouse. He leaves the torch at the door to keep animals away then goes upstairs to finally turn on the light while remembering the time his dad taught him how to start a car. While Madeline begins to stir, Toby waits for a boat, but seeing nobody is close, he decides to leave. When he makes his way down, the stairs break, causing Toby to fall and spill the gasoline all over the floor. It also makes him discover the special plant grows here as well. At that moment, the door closes on its own, and as soon as the rotating light is pointing in the opposite direction, demonic Madeline sneaks into the shadows to attack. Toby manages to grab some of the plant before he's dragged away, but Madeline's too strong and when he tries to use the plant on her, she turns his hands around to make the juice fall on his eyes instead. Madeline then jumps away when the light comes inside again, so Toby uses the chance to approach the sink and wash his face. Floating in the water he finds a glass shard and when Madeline has enough darkness to attack again, Toby uses the shard to keep her away. Toby begins considering using the torch as well, but when he approaches the door, he finds little Madeline crying. He worries about the child, but this is actually a trap, and the kid reveals her demonic face before returning to her adult form and jumping on Toby. A boat can be heard approaching the island so Toby needs to think fast because Madeline's in the process of possessing him too. Toby manages to grab the shard again, and when Madeline grabs his wrist to stop him, Toby improvises by turning the glass enough to make the light reflect on it and burn Madeline's face, getting her to back away. Then Toby runs outside and grabs the torch to throw it at the gasoline, starting a fire. Madeline turns human again to try to be pitied, but Toby just closes the door before running away. As soon as he makes it to the beach, Toby notices the boat is following the direction of the lighthouse, so he gets in the water to go after it. Unfortunately he isn't heard when he cries for help, and the noise allows demonic Madeline to sneak behind him and finally kill him. A few moments later, the rescuer leaves the island with Madeline aboard, believing her to be the person that turned on the lighthouse. As soon as the man is distracted, Madeline reveals she's still possessed and will cause more trouble in the city soon. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.